originally manufacturing expansion pack solutions for Sinclair computers. Due to concerns regarding dwindling sales, Memotech decided to enter the computer market. This one is an MTX 500. With its full metal case, let's open it up, fix what we need to, and review this rare British micro. Undoing the two screws on one side and the three rusty ones on the other, we can see what appears to be a keyboard ribbon that's not connected to the motherboard. As we've seen, the keys are sticky, so let's inspect this keyboard to see what we can do. A quick inspection of the keyboard PCB has identified that somebody else has been here before us. So let's remove the keyboard PCB, but we've got a problem. There's another fastening in a hard to reach area. Having managed to remove the bolt using a slimline multi-tool, we are able to remove the keyboard from the case for further inspection. As the keyboard requires some attention, removing all the keycaps using a keycap puller tool, we were able to review the condition of the keyboard and the switches. Unfortunately, all this movement has partially detached the keyboard ribbon. So, noting the orientation, I've marked this on the keyboard for a later review. Having fully cleaned the keyboard and exercised each of the switches, it was now time to turn our attention to some rust spots. Having applied some rust converter and performed a switch continuity test, it was now time to replace all the keycaps on the keyboard. Having sourced this 20 pin header, it was now time to fire up the desolderer to remove the pins from the original keyboard ribbon and install the 20 pin angled header onto the keyboard PCB. Having completed soldering and performing a continuity test, I identified a problem. Having implemented a corrective bodge wire, it was time to clean the top of the case ready to offer up the keyboard. But before we do that, let's have a quick review of the motherboard. And as we can see, there's a daughter board here, which is the interface to the video display controller and digital complex sound generator. Sliding out the motherboard and rear plastic interface panel, which leaves us with a full metal base mounting and internal motherboard. Upon reviewing the motherboard, we can identify the Zilog Z80 CPU, the Zilog Z80 counter timer circuit, the address decoder programmable array logic, which will become important later, 32K of dynamic RAM, the four channel sound chip, 16K of dynamic video RAM, which is managed by the video display controller. We also have an 8K basic ROM 
an 8K operating system ROM and 8K assembly ROM, which allows you to embed assembly language commands within BASIC. A typical MTX500 will have 32K of RAM. This is split into 16K pages and logically assigned blocks starting from zero and in this case, one. ROMs are managed using 8K blocks. So we can see the operating system and BASIC. But where is the assembly ROM? The MTX employs paging and for ROMs there are eight of them and on page one we can see the assembly AK ROM. Given the underside of the base has seen better days it's time to clean it up and to add some new colour coordinated rubber feet. Having designed and 3D printed some replacement RS-232 port covers, it was now time to slide the rear panel and motherboard into place, followed by locating the video board and attaching to the back panel video and sound interfaces. Sliding in the keyboard location fastenings. Hot gluing the keyboard jumper wires to the motherboard Fastening the keyboard to the front face here and for completeness designing and 3D printing this left hand side interface dust cover. And just in time for our first montage. And for completion, those with an eye for detail would have noticed during the demonstration there was a reference to Noddy, which is an internal MTX program which allows you to do text-based screen design. MagROM is a solid state alternative to loading games. Having selected the ROM6 jumper, inserted the board into the external MTX interface powered on and typed ROM6, this brings up a menu of 38 games for the MTX 500. So sampling these games, the first one is a Pac-Man clone. Here we have Bouncing Bill running across some lines.
and we can't miss out. Classic Space Invaders. And my current favourite, a pole position clone. So let's ramp things up with this MTX 512 ROM. Insert in the board, type in ROM6, and we've got 19 MTX 512 games. Selecting Jumping Jack, let's get it loaded. But there's a problem, we need an MTX 512. The MTX 512 traditionally came with 64k of RAM. So let's open it up and look inside. I can see an original keyboard ribbon. Everything else looks similar, apart from these two ROMs, where previously we saw three, which is down to the board version and not necessarily the model of the MTX. Memotech achieved this by consolidating the operating system and basic ROM onto one 16K chip. Checking the RAM chips, we've identified these are only 32K. So where's the other 32K? Traditionally, this would be located on this interface here. And like the ROMs, would have employed memory paging. Enter a modern MTX memory card and this one is a 512k RAM expansion. So fitting the memory card to the peripheral interface this uses all 16 memory pages and don't forget that includes zero. Due to historic errors with the original address decoder, let's replace this PAL with a modern corrected solution. Connecting the original keyboard ribbon and closing the memo tag up, it was now time for some 512 gaming. But something's wrong. I've forgotten to change the MTX 500 to 512 jumper. So let's press J for Highway Encounter. For the ultimate Memotech modern mod, this is the multifunction expansion system. The developers had key goals, which were an SD card disk system, a RAM expansion, VGA output, network connectivity, whilst using a low cost FPGA development board with internal mounting. So it's time to procure another MTX 500, install the MFX, and remediate any internal issues on the computer.
Powering the memo tag provides this MFX main menu, which confirms we have 512K of RAM, SD card capability, and CPM mode. So let's try that. Booting into CPM mode provides numerous partitions, which we can perform a directory listing on. However, Plugging in a network cable and running the FTP daemon allows us to file serve from the memo tech. Using a PC to load up the command line and connect to the memo tech using the FTP command to send an image file. Then back on the memo tag, we run the HTTP daemon. Then using an internet browser on the PC, we can select the file we FTP'd over and download to the browser from the memo tag in real time. Back to the main menu, we can see the next boot option is MTX mode which runs the basic ROM, allowing us to input and run a standard basic program. And finally, SDX Basic. So pressing I, we can see numerous enhanced functions prefixed with the user command. And pressing return, takes us into SDX Basic. Typing user DIR gives us a listing of all the files on this partition. And typing the user VGA command displays the higher resolution 80 column mode. Using these enhanced commands, let's load and play some Memotech games. Finally, in 2016, Andy Key released a solid state animated game for the memo tech called Hex Train. It has 15 colors and operates at 16 frames a second, all from a Z80 running at 4 MHz. So, how is this possible? 
It operates on the same premise as the 1980s game Dragon's Lair, where it uses pre-rendered sequences which are loaded from modern, fast, high-capacity storage devices. Andy has managed to overcome these challenges to provide the smooth and efficient video playback you can see here. Thanks for watching.